Hello everybody and welcome to my new SQL Server Quickie about clustered indexes. First of all, I want to wish you a happy new year and I hope you are already enjoying the new year. In my last SQL Server Quickie, I have talked about hash indexes that are introduced within memory OLTB in SQL Server 2014. But today I'm performing a 180 degree turn and I'm talking about a very basic thing in SQL Server, clustered indexes. In a relational database, it's always a good practice to define a clustered index on your table because you are getting huge performance benefits from it. In the first step, I'm giving you a brief overview about clustered indexes and how you can access them. Afterwards, we are switching over again to the flip chart where I'm describing to you the internal B plus tree structure used by SQL Server to implement clustered indexes. And finally, I'm showing you with a simple example in SQL Server Management Studio how you can analyze clustered index structures. When I'm describing clustered indexes to people, I'm always using the analogy of a phone book to think about it. In a phone book, you have some pages. In SQL Server, these pages are the data pages and they are physically ordered by some data, the so-called clustered key column. In a phone book, the phone book is always ordered by last name and first name. So in that case, we have defined a composite clustered key on that phone book. When we define a clustered index on the table in SQL Server, we are getting a so-called clustered table and the data, the data pages are part of the clustered index. That's also the reason why we can only define one clustered index on the table. And as a side effect, the data is also physically sorted in the clustered index. It's the same concept as in a phone book. In a phone book, we have a physical sort order by last name and first name. If you want another physical sorting order, like first name and last name, you need a different phone book. The same thing is also true in SQL Server. If you want a different physical sorting order of your table data, you need a different table on which you define another clustered index. When you read data from a phone book, you can perform two different access methods to the data. You can perform a so-called singleton lookup where you are searching for one specific person, like John Doe. In SQL Server, this is a so-called clustered index seek operation. In addition, you can also perform a so-called range scan, where you are searching for a larger range of data. For example, all persons with the last name of Maya. In SQL Server, this is also a clustered index seek operation followed by a scan, but the scan can't be seen directly in your execution plan. And finally, you can go through the whole phone book page by page from the beginning to the end. This, this is a clustered index scan in SQL Server. So let's switch now over to the flip chart where I will describe you the internal structure used by SQL Server to implement clustered indexes. I want to show you now on the flip chart with a very simple example how SQL Server creates a clustered index from a heap table. A heap table in SQL Server is just a table without a clustered index. Imagine we have a very simple table here with an ID column, integer column, with a, another column, char 4000, means our record is a little bit longer than 4000 bytes, means we can fit two records on one page. As you can see here, I have here multiple pages where we are storing in a heap table records 1 to record 12. So now imagine we are creating on the column ID 
a class.key or maybe you are creating the primary key constraint and now we want to see what happens in the background when SQL Server creates a class.index. The first thing that happens in the SQL Server is that SQL Server creates the leaf level of our class.index and SQL Server stores the data sorted by the cluster key column, in our case the column with the integer data type. So we have here our leaf level, our pages with record 1, record 2, record 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So you can see we have here multiple pages, 6 pages in our case. The table data is sorted through the clustered key. Every page in SQL Server has a page number. Imagine we have here page 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, and 84. That's the so-called leaf level of our clustered index. And on top of that leaf level, SQL Server creates the so-called navigation structure. navigation structure, which is a B plus tree in SQL Server. In our case, we are assuming we have an intermediate level, so we have a page here, we have another page here, and we have our one and only index root page. That intermediate level page points to those three pages in the leaf level, that intermediate level page points to those three pages on the right hand side of the leaf level and those intermediate pages are also linked together to support the read ahead mechanism. You can see here we have now three pages in the level below means we have here three index records and the same on our second page here. SQL Server stores in the index record the smallest value on the page in the level below. You can see here, smallest value is 1, but in the first step, SQL Server always stores the value null. So in our case, the value of null occurs on page 79. Smallest value of the second page is 3 on 81. And on our last page, we have the smallest value of 5, which is stored on page 81. And of course, we had here page 80. Second intermediate level page, smallest value here, is the value of 7 on page ID 82. Smallest value here, 9 on 83. And on the last and final page, value 11 on page 84. Of course, those intermediate pages also have page IDs. Let's assume we have here 150, 151, and let's assume our index root page has a value, a page ID of 180. So our index root page also points to those pages below in the level, means we have here two index records. Smallest value on that page is the value of null on page 150. Smallest value here, 7 on page 151. Perfect. We have created our class index structure. Means with that structure, we can perform mainly two operations. We can scan the whole index in the leaf level forward and also backward because those pages are linked together through a double linked list. So each page points to the next page and the next page points to the previous page. Index scan. Scan always means we are scanning page by page through that clustered index. Just the same as in a phone book. We are going through the phone book page by page doesn't scale very well when we have a huge amount of data in our leaf level. For that reason, we also have so-called seek operations. 
A seek means we are using the navigation structure of the clustered index to find a specific record or when we are doing a partial range scan we are seeking to the first value and scanning till we hit the end of our search predicate. Imagine now we are searching for the record with the ID of let's say 10. In that case we have to do multiple page reads. The first page read is the read from our index root page. You can see we have a value of 10, means 10 is larger than 7, so we are reading in the next step page ID 151. That's our second page read. You can see 10 larger than 9, 10 smaller than 11, means we, means we are going to page ID 83, which is our third page read, and here we are finding through the row offset array the corresponding record. That's the power of a seek operation. So you can see it doesn't matter if we are supplying the value of 1 or even the value of 12, we can retrieve every record with the same amount of page reads. In our case, we just need three page reads. This is a so called B3, B plus 3 to be specific means a balanced tree. So SQL Server uses a balanced tree to support clustered indexes. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where we will look on those concepts with a more concrete example. In the first step I'm creating a new database. Afterwards, I'm creating inside that database a new table where each record is 400 bytes long. This means we can store up to 20 records on one data page of 8 kilobytes. As you can also see from the table definition, I have created a primary key constraint on the first column with the name customer ID. By default, a primary key constraint is always enforced by a unique clustered index in SQL Server. This means now that our table data is physically sorted by that column. The value of 1 comes before the value of 2, the value of 2 comes before the value of 3, and so on, and so on. In the next step, I'm inserting in a simple while loop 80,000 records into that table. This means now that the leaf level of our clustered index consists of 4,000 pages because we are able to store 20 records on one page of 8 kilobytes. When we do a simple select star query against this table, SQL Server uses a clustered index scan operator in the execution plan. We are just reading page by page through our phone book that is sorted by the column customer ID. We can analyze also the physical structure of our clustered index through the dynamic management function sysdmdb index physical stats. When you pass in the detailed mode, SQL Server has to analyze the whole clustered index and also has to read the whole index into memory. With the detailed mode, SQL Server returns you for every level in the clustered index one record. In our case, we are getting back three records because the clustered index consists of three levels. We have the leaf level, the intermediate level and one dub level where the one and only index root page is stored. As you can also see very nicely from the column page count, we have 4000 pages in the leaf level, 14 pages in the intermediate level and one index root page. In the next step, I'm creating a simple helper table in which we will store the output of the dbcc int command that we are using in the next step to retrieve all the pages of our clustered index. When we now do a select query against this little helper table and we are restricting to the page type of 2, SQL Server returns us the 15 index pages. With the page type of 1, we are getting back 
to 4,000 data pages that are stored in the leaf level of the clustered index. In the next step, we are now retrieving our one and only index root page. We are using now that page ID to dump out the page through the dbcc page command. As you can see now from the output, the index root page stores 14 rows, which also means that we have in the level below, in the intermediate level of our clustered index, 14 pages. We are searching now for the customer ID with the value 33,333. The current customer ID tells us the smallest value that is stored on a specific page in the level below. In our case, we are picking the seventh page because our search value falls into that specific range. In the next step, we are also dumping out that intermediate level page through DBCC page. As you can see now from the output, the page stores 269 index records because that intermediate level points to 269 data pages in the leaf level. So we are taking here now the correct page and finally we are also dumping that page out again with the dbcc page command. Now we have our data page in front of us. As you can see from the row offset array at the end of the page, the page stores the 20 records. In our case, SQL Server stores in slot 12 the record that we have searched. The record with the custom ID of 33,333. Congratulations! You have now done the same as SQL Server when he performs a clustered index seek operation in the execution plan. We have only needed three page reads to find the corresponding record out from a set of 80,000 records. That's also the power of clustered indexes. In this SQL Server quickie, you have seen the basic concepts about clustered indexes in SQL Server. As you have learned, SQL Server uses internally a B plus tree structure to structure the index internally. The clustered key defines the physical sorting ordering of the index data itself and SQL Server always guarantees the physical sorting of your data in the clustered index. You have also seen the differences between index seeks and index can operations and how they look like internally. If you are more interested about how to choose the right clustered key and why sometimes a random key value like a unique identifier can be a very good solution, I also highly recommend my online training video about that topic to you. I hope that you have enjoyed this SQL Server quickie and I also hope that you have now a better understanding about clustered indexes in SQL Server and what are the differences between scans and seeks. Thanks for watching me again and see you very soon on one of my next SQL Server quickies.